So basically, there are two main trends that we are looking into um, in regards to new food generation. On the one hand, it's the growing population. As we all know, just uh, last year, we've reached the mark of 8 billion uh, people on, th on the planet. And uh, 800 million of these actually, tonight they will go to bed hungry because they have not enough food. Additionally, also uh, 2 billion uh, people, which is basically every fourth, so they have a deficit in, uh, in the nutrition they take. So yeah, we can say that every fourth person here in the room kind of eats the wrong food and uh, eats food that in the long term is not good for the body. I mean, we see that it results then in high cholesterol, high blood, sh blood sugar, high uh, blood level as well. And uh, on the other hand, what we have is uh, the increasing awareness for the environment, for climate change. So uh, one third of all uh, global greenhouse emissions is related to food. And then looking also that one third of all food is actually wasted and not even consumed, uh, which is quite a high number. And so we can see that those two uh, different trends, on the one hand, the growing population, and on the other hand, the increasing awareness uh, for the environment, these two trends put a big pressure on the demand for food and on the global food uh, supply chain. And so I'm really happy to see that around the world, wherever we go, we see many innovative companies working actually on uh, finding ways to, to combat, combat these uh, issues that we will have in, in regards to food. So for example, we have the alternative protein with the insect-based uh, protein or the lab-grown meat. We also have personalized uh, nutrition, for example, looking at 3D printed nutrition in the future. Uh, also the vertical farming, where instead of uh, using the land, we actually look into uh, putting the agriculture into, into a vertical stack uh, that can be grown everywhere. And of course, also plant-based uh, food, which is why we are all here today, uh, which we also see an increasing growth in the future. And so in the end, what uh, we need to achieve kind of is that we now look into, uh, that we continue looking into what the con consumer wants, so that we also continue looking at what is uh, relevant for the consumer, the feedback that, th the feedback that he's giving um, towards us to see um, where it's going in the future. And then also what we need is an uh, infrastructure behind it, because of course uh, we need to make sure that it's getting convenient to the consumer itself. So in terms of new uh, retail chain, uh, new retail uh, opportunities, for example, and also in underdeveloped countries, most importantly, we first of all need this su supply chain to bring the food across to people in need. And uh, also what we need to make sure is that uh, we have increasing collaboration between the stakeholders. So looking at scientists, for example, we need to make sure that they can continuously do their research and development with the uh, funds for this as well. We also need to look at the government and the policy makers uh, to make sure that they also um, favor the conditions to have uh, yeah, food of the future in our, in our countries. For example, I'm personally from Germany, and as you might know, the European Commission just recently, they have uh, agreed to take insect-based food as, uh, yeah, as food to accept it into the European Union. Also, the government in Germany is working actively on a food nutrition strategy to make sure that everybody, no matter the background, no matter where they come from, uh, has access to healthy and affordable food. And lastly, of course, also the private stakeholders. They also have to collaborate to make sure that we see this area thriving in the future and uh, yeah, that we can all make sure to, to combat the food insecurity uh, in the future.